Hey guys, welcome to the podcast this week. This is episode five. five. Man, we're starting to roll through these things. Um, we were talking earlier, um, you heard the podcast about Africa, and obviously it's one of our favorite places. Yes. Um, but then the question came up, how do you get there? Well, by plane. By plane. By well, plane, exactly. It's a long swim. It's a long swim, and the boat ride takes forever. forever. So we recommend flying to Africa. On an airplane, because, you know, flapping your arms. <laughs> <laughs> and a helicopter is just way, way too bumpy. Too long. Yeah. But anyway, you know, <clears throat> I've been lucky. I, I've traveled a bunch of different routes to yes. Africa. And typically, you're going to fly either Delta or United. They fly out of Atlanta or Newark. Yes. And so once you get to those hubs, then it's a direct flight to Johannesburg. But, buddy, they're long flights. Be prepared. 15 and a half hours on an airplane. 15 and a half hours. Now, with that being said, the seats are a little bigger. Yes. Um, free drinks. Yes. Free movies. You have your own TV. Three meals. Three meals on there. Um, so they do take care of you. They darken the cabin so you can sleep as much as you can on an airplane. Yeah, you're not going to sleep much, but you are going to sleep. But... The nice thing about that flight is you take off and you land in Africa. Yes. That is that is very nice. Some of the other routes I've taken, I've actually flown over to Europe. I've been through Paris. I've been through Frankfurt, Germany. I've been through London. And typically what happens is you arrive in the morning over there uh, between 8 and 10 in the morning. And then that flight to, to Johannesburg doesn't leave till like 10 or 11 at night. So it makes the trip a lot longer. That's two full days. It's two full days to get there. Um, I don't know. I think I prefer the flights out of the States because I just like to get there. But when I was first starting to go, it was kind of nice to have 10 or 11 hours to go experience Paris or Frankfurt. That was kind of nice. That's that's good beer. Oh, Frankfurt. (laughs) We had a couple of them. Yes, we did. Um, But but there's there's those routes as well. So just know that if you go through Europe – Honestly, sometimes those prices are a little bit better than flying out of the States, but it does take you a lot longer to get to Africa. And they add another level of complexity when you're taking weapons. That is correct. Um, And I'll even speak on archery equipment. If you're flying to Africa, a lot of the cheapest flights through Delta are through Amsterdam, but you do not want to take archery equipment through Amsterdam because they can confiscate it. Yes. So you don't want to do that. Same with some of the rifles. Yes, yeah, so reading some of the forums or Facebook groups, uh, people are talking about having to pay an extra thousand dollars to transfer rifles from airplane to airplane and have to have special permits just to do that. Adds a whole level of stress oh, that you don't need. Um, a lot of stress. Even like you know, some people don't you know don't have high end guns, so you have you know your runner line Ruger, Winchester, Remington, anything like that, and that fee is more than what the gun costs. Absolutely. And I always tell people that b- before, you know, when I help people book hunts to Africa, are you taking a bow? Yes. Are you taking a gun? If so, let me help you. Uh, there's been times where I had a problem with British Airlines. They weren't going to transfer my bow yes. because they said it was a weapon. They finally let the bow go through. Um, but honestly, the, the easiest routes are, you know, always through Johannes or to Johannesburg via Atlanta or Newark. Um, you know, South African airlines used to fly out of JFK, yeah. um, but then they went bankrupt. After COVID, they really they, went away. They were done. So now United's kind of picked that flight up. I also went through Doha over in the Middle East, and um, that was actually very nice. But it's still, it was about a 14-hour flight to Doha, if I remember correctly, and then still another eight hours to Joburg. And so it adds just an extra day for your trip. So if you can get there, that's what, what we, we recommend. Excuse me. I get asked all the time, too, how to book those flights. Now, I've had great luck booking on Expedia. To be quite honest with you, I've booked a lot of flights there. People always warn me about that because if something goes wrong, who do I contact, everything like that. I've never had any issues with anything like that. I've booked with travel agents. I've booked with uh, the, you know, airlines direct. So I think whatever you're comfortable with, uh, many of my clients have a travel agent that they trust. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. If you trust that travel agent, have them help you with the travel. Even your outfitter, talk to them. They may work with a travel agent that's here in the States that help their clients. Yeah. A lot of outfitters that, that I work with around around the globe, they do have to have travel agents. And I always talk with your outfitter and your consultant before you book your flight because you want to make sure you're getting in the right day and you're leaving the right day. Right. Because it does take two days to get there. Yes. I mean, here in Helena, Montana, we leave at six o'clock in the morning. 
it's not until eight o'clock the next day p.m. in Johannesburg that we're landing. So yes. you have to make sure you have the dates correct for your airline ticket because if your date's locked in for hunting, you don't want that to overlap or put the outfitter into a, a tight spot of trying to accommodate. Absolutely. And that's one of the services we do at True Flight. I mean, we yes. help people with that. We're not going to book your tickets for you, but we are going to help you with that as well. Um, one other thing we wanted to touch on real quick was um, packing for your yes. trip. Um, whether it's your weapon or your suitcase or your carry-on, um, I get asked all the time. I had a client um, put his bow in his bow case, his arrows in there with broadheads on them. When he arrived in Johannesburg, uh, the broadhead came off and sliced his string. Oh. So he had no bow. So I always tell people, put your bow in your bow case, take your broadheads and put them in a broadhead case in your suitcase. Your check baggage. Your check baggage. Yes. They can't go on your carry-on because they're a weapon. So um, same with the rifle. Your rifle will go into your case. It'll have to be have TSA locks on it or master locks. Yeah. If they have master locks, TSA agents will have to inspect it. Um, and then your ammo has to be in a locked case in your suitcase as well. And when you're talking TSA agents have to inspect it, they inspect it at the check-in counter of your first flight. Correct. Um, that's where you, you declare it's a weapon. They will call TSA. You'll open the case. They look at it, make sure it's a safe firearm, and it's ready for travel per TSA guidelines. They close it, and you lock it. We recommend mac, uh, master locks. Yes. Um, if they need into it, TSA can't get into those because it's not a TSA lock, but they will page you, and you go out and unlock the case for them. Yeah, correct. I, Whenever I travel with a weapon, I don't want somebody getting into that case. Yes. You know, you don't want anybody messing with your weapon. And so if they have to call me to open it, that's fine. That's I fine. have no problem with that. I do that with my bow as well. I, I do too. I use master locks for my bow case. And I always take two sets of keys. I mm -hmm. have one in my pocket in case I need to open it. And then I have one in my carry-on yes. that, that's in my backpack basically. So my carry-on when I go is my hunting backpack. And inside of that is all my electronics and optics. Absolutely. Anything expensive, do not put it in your suitcase. Because, you know, as, as much as we want to trust everybody in the world, there are those people. And airlines employ thousands upon thousands of people. They can't vet every single one of them. And there are stories of people opening bags and taking valuables out. Absolutely. If somebody opens up your case and sees a $2,000 pair of binoculars, I mean, they might have that urge to take that item. Right. So in in my um, backpack, obviously, I will take that as my carry-on. Like I say, my binoculars will go in there. Um, a small camcorder, if you have it, a GoPro, if you're going to film your hunt. Um, I take all of my, I obviously, my passports in there, my keys from my locks, uh, neck pillow, just yes. stuff like that for your travel. One one thing that I do take now on every long flight is a little travel bag. I call it a medicine bag. <laughs> Not that I'm that old, but I do take stuff. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> but I, I take stuff like, you know, ibuprofen, yes. a little toothbrush, toothpaste, um, maybe some Pepto pills in case your stomach gets upset. I take some stuff with me that I can have as I'm traveling. Um, then the last piece for the suitcase your clothes, your boots, you know, like say yes. broadheads, bullets, anything like that. And again, those should be locked with TSA locks because they will typically open those yes, up on will. almost every international flight. But um, and like we said before, don't pack too much because most of these places do laundry for you. So two outfits is plenty for hunting over in Africa, New Zealand, places like that. Absolutely. And, and having a small little toothbrush toothpaste is a good thing for those long haul flights. After 15 hours, you wake <laughs> up the next day. It's nice to freshen up before you land. You go and brush your teeth, splash water on your face. It is. It can make a it can make a big difference for sure just to make that flight a little bit more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, again, go ahead and book your flights. Make sure you talk to your hunt consultant and your outfitter before you do the dates. Uh, book those flights with someone that you're comfortable with. If you can go directly from the U.S. to Johannesburg, that's probably the best. And uh, just make sure to jump on the website, trueflightadventures.com. We have a packing list for Africa. But honestly, you can use that for Spain. You can use it for Ireland. Yes. Uh, the South Pacific, South America, anywhere. That's how we typically pack our bags and our, and our rifle cases, bow cases, anything like that. Excellent. So anybody have any questions, reach out to us. I'm we'll Colin. be here to help. That's Aaron. We're here with Giving Back Podcast. See you next week. See you. If any of you want to go on any of these hunts or trips around the world that we talk about on this podcast, True Flight Adventures can help you with every step of the way. Get a hold of us either by calling or emailing, and we can get you on that trip of a lifetime.
Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to hear more of our stories and commentary, or something to sleep to, be sure to follow us on Spotify, Google Podcast, or Apple Podcast. If you enjoy watching us ramble on, then subscribe on YouTube or Carbon TV. Until next time on Giving Back TV Podcast.